the Nikon Nikkor 450 millimeter M lens. Can I please get a mic drop? Ooh. I invite you to take a closer look with me at not only the specifications of this lens, but also some of my sample images of its practical application. As a matter of full disclosure, I am not sponsored by Nikon or the Nidac Copal Corporation. I purchased this lens with my own money off of the used market. All of the opinions expressed in this video are my own thoughts and are based upon this guy's experiences using this lens. In order to understand some of the manufacturer's specifications of this lens, you guessed it, we need to briefly review some optical properties. Don't worry, I'll make it visually easy and practical to understand. A lens projects a cone of light onto the film plane and the shape of that defined cone is characterized in degrees. This is what is referred to as the field angle, also known as the angle of coverage. The greater the angle of coverage, the larger the diameter of the cone of light projected onto the film plane. It is important to note that this is often confused with angle of view, which is the cone of light in front of the lens. To understand if a lens can be used with a particular size of sheet film, we are only concerned with the cone of light being projected onto the film plane. That's our focus. If you've watched my other lens reviews, you know I take my puns seriously. More importantly is the diameter of the cone of light projected onto the film. That diameter is what is referred to as the circle of good definition or more simply put, the image circle. For the 450mm M lens, Nikon reports that the projected cone of light or angle of coverage is 52 degrees, which produces a diameter of 440mm at f22. It is important to note that manufacturers use f16 or f22 focused at infinity to report the specifications on their lenses because this is typically the aperture where the maximum image circle is achieved. Why should I care, Tony? Let's break it down. We know that a piece of 8x10 film measures approximately 323 millimeters in diameter from corner to corner. Keep in mind that the film holder covers some of the edges of the film, so the surface area available for exposure is slightly less than 323 millimeters. Since the 450 millimeter M lens projects an image circle that is 440 millimeters in diameter, then we know that the piece of 8x10 film will receive generous coverage of the projected image cone. In other words, there won't be any areas of the film that don't get exposed to light. Realistically, 8x10 film requires that a lens project an image circle that covers an area of more than 323 millimeters. This is especially true if you want to apply any movements to your image. At 440 millimeters in diameter, the Nikon Nikkor 450 millimeter M lens will likely never run out of image circle, even with the application of extensive, realistic movements when focused at infinity. If that isn't enough, move the camera closer. That's an important point to keep in mind with any large format lens because the closer the camera is to the subject, the more coverage you'll get from the lens. As objects are focused closer than infinity, the image circle diameter increases because the distance between the lens and the film plane increases. In fact, you could get away with a lens for 4x5 on 8x10 if you were doing macro photography because of this little piece of knowledge. The take home message here is that if you are focused at infinity and want to apply generous movements to your composition, the Nikon Nikkor 450mm M lens has got you covered. Well, it has your 8x10 piece of film covered. You know what I mean, you get the message. It is noteworthy that modern lenses generally will produce sharp and clean images to the edges of the projected image circle and are typically designed to cut off the image circle before any chromatic aberrations begin to occur. Older lenses don't have this, so the image gets soft and fuzzy with swirls around the edges of the image circle. You may have seen this effect in older photographs and possibly even seek lenses that have this look. Some photographers purposely use these fall off effects in their images to add interest and character. It's all personal preference. I personally like clean images across the entire piece of film. The takeaway message is that the Nikon Nikkor 450mm M lens has generous coverage for all practical movements on 8x10 when focused at infinity and of course will work perfectly fine with smaller formats. If you aren't aware, the size of the film and focal length are going to affect the angle of view. In other words, the Nikon Nikkor 450mm M lens on an 8x10 camera is equivalent in the angle of view to about a 65mm lens in the 35mm format. 
Okay, so now that we've beaten into the ground that the Nikon Nikkor 450mm M lens generously covers the 8x10 format, let's talk about what I see as the most practical feature of this beautiful piece of glass. The relative compact size and lightweight. This lens is so small that the front thread is only 67 millimeters. That means there shouldn't be any issues using the variety of filter kits on the market. It fits perfectly onto a Linhof Technica style lens board that helps to minimize the unnecessary bulk, which is great for hiking. The weight is quite good for this focal length as well, weighing in at about 1.8 pounds. Only the Fujifilm Fujinon C 450mm f12.5 lens can boast being significantly lighter with an even larger image circle of 486 millimeters. Let's take a look at the anatomy of this lens, which is not all that different from other modern large format lenses. There are basically four parts that make a lens fully functional and ready to use on your camera. We have the rear lens element and the front lens element that attach to the shutter. There are several different manufacturer shutters, but the most commonly used are made by Copal. They are available in three sizes and the focal length determines which shutter size is appropriate for the lens. In this case, the Nikon Nikkor 450mm M lens is coupled with a Copal No. 3 shutter, which needs a 65mm hole to properly secure the lens to the lens board. The aperture ranges from f9 to f128, and the shutter speed tops out at 1 125th of a second. It also has an X contact sync socket that allows for connecting the shutter to studio strobes. Since these shutters use leaf style shutters, they are capable of syncing modern studio strobes to all speeds, which is also a nice feature. If you want to learn how to connect your studio strobes to your large format lenses, I'll leave a link to my video in the description that explains that process. Let's assemble this lens outfit. The first thing I like to do is open the press focus lever, also called a preview button. Then I slide the aperture to the largest possible setting to minimize the risk of coming into contact with these very fragile blades. I then attach the shutter to my Linhof technical lens board by threading the retaining ring on the back side that faces the film plane. I use this adjustable spanner wrench to lightly tighten the retaining ring. There's no need to be overzealous with tightening. Next, I'll attach the rear lens element to the shutter. I like to start by threading counterclockwise to reduce the risk of cross-threading, followed by a clockwise direction. I finish the assembly by threading the front lens element in the same manner. Sweet! What an incredibly compact lens for this focal length that is ready for action. For me, this lens gets used mostly in the studio for portraits of my kids, and maybe the occasional selfie. I can't recall many shots in landscape photography where I've employed this focal length. It's probably just a handful for me. You can probably guess what the one negative aspect of this lens is going to be for me. That's right, the maximum aperture of f9. <laughs> At the 450 millimeter focal length, it's not horrible, but there is definitely a difference in the brightness of the image projected onto the ground glass compared with larger aperture lenses. In the studio, I circumvent this problem by turning on a 600 watt hot lamp during focusing to make it easier and less frustrating. I guess the somewhat good news about this aperture is that this is about as good as it gets for this focal length. Interestingly, long lenses tend to have maximum apertures between f8 to f18, so there isn't any significantly faster alternative lens to the Nikon Nikkor 450mm M lens, at least not that I'm aware of. The Fujifilm Fujinon 450mm CMW opens up to a whopping f8. <laughs> That's really nothing to write home about. I can't think of anything else to complain about when it comes to the Nikon Nikkor 450mm M lens. In fact, you could make the argument that for this focal length, this lens may be the best bang for your buck on the used market. In 1998, this lens retailed for $1,199.95, according to B&H's sourcebook. That's $2,270.46 in 2024 dollars. That's a moderately priced high-end lens. In 2016, I paid $660 and one penny on the used market, and today it runs about $1,000 to $1,500. That's not bad, especially if you consider that it can be used on 4x5, 8x10, and the almost forgotten 10x12 camera sizes. The Nikon Nikkor 450mm M lens. Need I say more?
Well, yes, there's just one more related thing. I think it's worthwhile mentioning that modern large format lenses were designed specifically for applications that required attention to the finest detail, with the best sharpness, contrast, and color reproduction available to meet the demands of discerning clients. Large format photography was a medium that wasn't within the budget for most people. It was, and perhaps still is, a unique type of photography. The combination of the large piece of film with the modern large format lens makes for images that are the very best that you can get on film. So the bottom line is that worrying about the brand you choose or if a lens is sharp enough is far less important than matching your focal length to your format, selecting what angle of view you prefer to achieve the results you're after, and deciding if size and weight is important to you. So, in conclusion, I don't have any reservations about the Nikon Nikkor 450mm M lens and make use of it extensively in the studio with my 8x10 kit. The four elements in three groups provide this lens with the capability of making images that are sharp with beautiful contrast and vibrant colors. It gives me the ability to enjoy a long focal length on 8x10 film in a relatively lightweight compact size. If I used this focal length heavily in the field and I needed to save weight, I might consider shedding one pound and opt for the Fujifilm Fujinon C 450mm f12.5 lens, but that does come with the compromise of a darker ground glass. Regardless, the Nikon Nikkor 450mm M lens is one that I appreciate having for my studio work and the occasional landscape photograph. Here are some examples of my work taken with this lens. Are you considering the purchase of the Nikon Nikkor 450mm M lens or already own it? Leave me a comment below on why you like this lens. If you've enjoyed this video, please consider hitting the like button and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so. As always, thanks for watching.